More than 4.3 million people have contracted COVID-19 here in the U.S. That is a statistic that we update you every day on here on air and, of course, online. And we've done everything we can at News for Jax to help keep employees healthy. You see us in separate studios. Out in the newsroom, we wear masks. But still, one of our own has the virus. It was able to be isolated just to him. So reporter and anchor Vic Michalucci is one of the millions of people recovering from COVID-19 after testing positive last week. So Vic joins us this morning via Zoom. Vic, you look pretty good, which is really glad to hear. We are so happy you're feeling better than you were just a few days ago. So can you kind of walk us through how long did it take before you had those first symptoms? Yeah, thank you, Mel. So it's good to be here. And first of all, it's sobering because there are so many other people in a similar situation that are very sick and they don't know what's going to happen next because you can't just Google a coronavirus timeline on when will I get these mm -hmm. symptoms. But to your question, I think that I got symptoms about three days after I was exposed, or at least I knew I was exposed. And, uh, you know, you start just feeling a, a little bit off something's wrong with your body. And then within a couple of hours, boom, it hits you like a ton of bricks right there. And it's as cliche as it sounds where literally you, you're you just, you're sick and you don't want to do anything. You don't want to go anywhere. Uh, I was to a point where I felt so bad that I didn't even think that I was going to be able to physically drive to the other side of town to get my COVID-19 test. Now I was able to feel a little bit better, gain some energy, and I knew how important it was to get tested to know for sure, and I was able to do that and get the positive test. Yeah, and, and I mean, one thing about it you talked about and what you wrote on our on newsforjax.com is that that isolation was really difficult for you. Uh, I, was, I was wondering, too, did you have any of that brain fog that people talk about? Yeah, absolutely. I just didn't feel myself, and I, I was worried, and uh, time meant nothing. I had to look at my phone constantly to see what time it was, what day it was. In fact, I actually wrote stuff down because I wanted to be able to remember it. Mm -hmm. And and that's probably one of the scarier things, Melanie, because, you know, we love to be with it, right? You want to be sharp. Mm -hmm. You want to be on top of the situation. And then all of a sudden you can't and you're doing it alone, too. And there's really no set guidelines as far as how to recover for this. Do I take medicine? Uh, do I get additional treatment? Uh, I had a lot of dizziness and brain fog and I just wasn't feeling myself for quite some time. And uh, it's not fun. Yeah, I'll tell you, you that. I don't wish this upon anyone. I know, talk about your symptoms. You said you got your fever was at 101. You know, at one point you did have trouble breathing. You know, you had every, the chills, all the yeah. things that you expressed. Did, what did you take and who did you consult? All right, so about the symptoms, Melanie. So the first day, um, by that night, I had 101.4, I believe. Again, I was kind of in a fog, so I was taking pictures of my thermometer so that I could even remember where I was at. I had the body aches, I had the sweats, I had the chills, nothing was comfortable, I couldn't be anywhere. Uh, then it grew to cough, to chest congestion, to uh, shortness of breath, to even stomach issues for a little bit. I was tired. I wanted to sleep all day. Then I wanted to be up all night. I mean, the, the roller coaster there changed by the hours. Uh, as far as what I took, so I did have access to some great physicians and nurses that gave me advice via phone, of course. But I stuck with acetaminophen, so Tylenol, a lot of water, some vitamins. I tried to eat really healthy, berries, veggies, real clean food. I did not take any of the, the big time medicines. Uh, certainly it was talked about, but I didn't really want to go there and deal with the potential side effects there. This really, for the most part, is a virus that you have to ride out. Now, there are people that have terrible situations. I have friends that had to go to the hospital. In fact, I have buddies that are in the hospital right now, and I, I feel for them because everyone experiences this differently. But for those with the quote unquote mild mm -hmm. cases, which are still pretty ugly, mm -hmm. you kind of just ride it out, unfortunately, but you do it alone and you yeah. do it away from people because you don't want to hurt anybody else and you don't want to spread this thing even further. Right. You have that responsibility. Um, so yeah. I want to ask you one thing because I thought this was really interesting and, and kind of resonated with some of the interviews we've done with doctors. But you tested negative on Monday and then on Tuesday you tested positive. 
So that reinforces that, you know, if you know you've been exposed, you do have to kind of wait in isolation those couple of days before getting tested sure. because you would have thought you were fine. Sure. I tested negative on Tuesday okay. and I tested positive on Thursday. Okay. To be clear. Thank you for that correction. But uh, I tested negative on, on Tuesday morning with, I saw you. I mean, we both had our masks on and we kept our distance. But I, there was no reason for me to test besides the fact that we had a guest on that was talking about rapid testing. And I wanted to show that it wasn't all that terrible because a lot of people are, quite frankly, concerned to get their tests. So, yeah, I, I took that and I had heard from day one from these doctors and medical experts just because you get a negative test doesn't mean you have a clean bill of health and doesn't mean that you're not going to develop something. So, yeah, right. you know, ironically, sadly, unfortunately, very quickly yeah, after changed. taking that test, I, I, it did change. But, you know, you have to go back to keeping six feet apart from people, washing your hands, wiping down any yeah. surfaces that you're on because I, I, I firmly believe that we were able to keep it to just me. My colleagues were safe. Uh, the two or three friends that I had seen were safe. Thank God my family was safe. I was worried about them. I took my dad out to dinner on Sunday night. I, mm -hmm. I hung out with my mom. So, Vic, you know, that's Vic, really what scared me. They're wrapping me, but I do, I do want to ask one question because I thought this was interesting. You know, you posted this. It's on social media. It's on newsforjax.com. And the politics surrounding this virus are real. So you've gotten some backlash. Did you expect that from the general public? You know, I did. Obviously, I think that you and I both work in this industry and we understand that there's going to be backlash. And people are going to make you feel bad for being sick. And you can't do that. You can't make people feel like they're a bad person for having this virus mm -hmm. you know uh, i was careful you know i i wasn't going out uh and, and partying i wasn't going to events with people you know i kept my distance you know always kept a mask handy i think that above the backlash is all of the positive reaction that i've gotten from people saying i was in the hospital for three weeks with this mm -hmm. i still feel terrible my loved ones are sick. We're dealing with this and it's day one. Thank you for giving me some sort of story here. Somebody said they lost their sister who's only 30 years old. Now I'm in contact with them. That breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people that said I was scared to speak out uh, because of, you know, what surrounds this virus. Yeah. And, and now I feel like I can. I, you know? I think that's such a good point because I think some people may be a little embarrassed, but to be able to get the story out there and knowing that you know, you want people to know what it was like and that there was nothing to be embarrassed about. So we are keeping you in our thoughts and prayers, and we hope you continue to get better. You look good. So we hope we'll see you soon. Thanks, Mel. All right. We'll be right back after the break.